Welcome to a Legendarium special about life aboard a ship during the Golden Age of Piracy. Pirates have been entrenched in the Western imagination since the publication of Alexander Eckwillman's 1681 book A History of Pirates and perhaps before. The vast number of films, books, and plays about pirates have involved supernatural beings, buried treasure, grand adventures, and undead film franchises that refuse to die. Of course, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the harsh reality of pirate life is far different. Of course, the pirates of the Golden Age, which spanned from 1650 to 1720, included several different types of seafaring thieves. Buccaneers operated from the French-held island of Tortuga. They lived rough in the wild and hunted pigs before they started preying on Spanish shipping instead. Privateers received a letter of mark to steal the ships belonging to enemy countries on behalf of their own country, making them legalized pirates. Unless, of course, you fell into the other side's hands. Finally, pirates operated outside the law of all countries, seizing the ships of their own country or any other. No matter what they called themselves, pirates lived hard lives in an age already not known for easy living. If you signed aboard as a buccaneer, privateer, or pirate, you wouldn't have worn a flamboyant Halloween costume. They dressed like typical sailors of the time, wearing a white blouse and baggy canvas trousers. Most men worked barefoot, for that provided better traction on a deck, often sopping wet from waves or Caribbean storms. Officers had better dress, wearing boots and straw hats to keep their faces paler, so they looked like gentlemen who did not have to work in the sun. Of course, officers also had awesome responsibilities like navigating, charting courses, enforcing discipline on a ruly cruise, and keeping everyone fed. On the other hand, sailors stood watch, managed cargo, scrubbed decks, worked the rigging, and cleaned equipment on a slow day. Storms at sea remained a constant danger, sometimes lasting for two hours, other times for two days. Sleep schedules would be canceled until the ship came out of danger, and during the storm, ships faced waves so great that they could sweep crewmen straight off the deck and possibly submerge the ship. If you've seen pirates sailing massive frigates in the movies, that is rubbish. Pirates made their ships for speed, preferring smaller and sleeker vessels specially engineered to be fast. These small ships, rarely more than 60 or 70 feet long, packed aboard crews nearing 70. Some brought pets like cats for mice catching, monkeys for amusement, and yes, parrots, which took up very little space and ate very little as well. Most sailors had nothing more than a hammock to sleep in and a strong box to place their personal effects in, and if the ship became overcrowded, they slept on the floor. Early in the voyage, the sailors might have pigs or goats on board in pens, which tasted delicious but made a terrible mess on board. After eating through their supply of fresh meat, the sailors settled into sea rations. Their food, while filling, did not exactly set one to salivating. Their main foods included hardtack, a super hard dry bread that had to be soaked before eating. It kept for three years, though oftentimes weevils crawled in them. Sailors knocked the hardtack against the table to get rid of them. And if hardtack contained no weevils, the men threw them overboard, saying that food not fit for weevils could not be fit for men. They also ate salt beef, cold and tough, but filling. In truth, the diet of sailing ships attracted the sons of many poor men, for at the very least, they could count on three square meals a day, so-called because sailors ate on square-shaped tin plates and used a table that did not use straight standing legs, but hung from four chains suspended from the ceiling. 
Yet this vitamin-poor diet led to scurvy, which caused pale skin, hunched back, spotted skin, swollen and bleeding gums, and eventually a loss of hair and teeth. It retired quite a few pirates from their careers and from life. Pirates also suffered from dysentery caused by eating spoiled food, which caused the walls of their bowels to swell up and bleed, thus causing bloody diarrhea. Medicine on board pirate ships could also be horrifying. Ship's surgeons used euthral syringes to inject mercury into the male organ to treat syphilis. They also used pump clysters to give enemas and porringers for bloodletting. In the mind of a 17th century doctor, enemas and bloodletting could cure anything that a mercury injection could not. And if a sailor suffered from a broken or shattered leg, they got the victim really drunk, gave them a belt to bite, and then sliced open the flesh above the breakage. They then pulled out the bone saw and hacked their way through the bone, the most skilled surgeons doing so in 90 seconds. They then sewed flaps of skin back over the stump, but only after cauterizing the wound with a red-hot iron. Less than half of all sailors survived this ordeal. Being on a pirate or privateering ship could mean entire weeks sailing along the Cuban or Mexican coastline without seeing a single ship. That could mean a long and dull voyage with little but hard work and foul weather to liven things up. Yet when the pirate crew saw a ship, they sprang into action. Of course, pirates really hoped for the enemy to simply surrender. Low-paid and harshly treated crews could well have no wish to die for their captain and simply turn their ship and its cargo over to the pirates. Quite a few of the crewmen on board the captured ship would also join the pirates for lack of any better choice. Yet if the enemy vessel resisted, the pirates opened fire with arquebuses or muskets, picking off the enemy ship's pilot, captain, and any man in the rigging to keep them from moving. When the pirates stormed the ship, they flung grenades about the size of a baseball filled with metal bits that shredded through flesh. Most wore leather vests covered with tar to give themselves some protection, and used blunderbusses, which functioned much like modern-day shotguns, spraying shot over a wide range and taking out many men with a single pull of the trigger. Yet for hand-to-hand -hand combat, pirates preferred heavy cutlasses or axes to batter away at the enemy. After taking the ship, the pilot the pirates rarely found gold, silver, or jewels. They would be far more likely to steal something they could easily sell in port, like bolts of cloth, timber, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. Pirates also sought practical items like soap, candles, or utensils, which made life on the ship a little better. If nothing else, pirates in the Caribbean had relatively short voyages, with trips lasting weeks rather than months. Even better, even the humblest sailor received a share of the loot, so a successful voyage meant a windfall. Yet whether cowboys in the American West, oil field workers, or Golden Age pirates, it seems that most men who do especially hard and dangerous jobs for high pay often spend it fast. Of course, pirates proved little different when they arrived in Tortuga or Port Royal. Most of their riches wound up with the brothel owners and brandy shopkeepers, and after they squandered their share of the loot, they had no choice but to seek another pirate ship and began another adventure, which of course could well be their last. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe, and if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.